Hello everybody! Today we're taking a quick look at the third installment in the Deadpool film franchise, Deadpool and Wolverine, directed by Sean Levy and starring Ryan Reynolds, Hugh Jackman, and Emma Corrin. Mr. Poole has been having a little too much fun with Cable's time travel thingy and has attracted the attention of the TVA. He is brought before one of the higher-ups at the TVA, a Mr. Paradox, who informs Wade that his timeline is about to collapse as his universe lost its anchor being, which just happened to be Logan. Not content to just sit back and let his universe collapse, Wade steals a temp pad and starts hopping around between different timelines, trying to find a new Wolverine that can replace his. Wade and Logan end up going on a journey through time and space where they ultimately meet the sister of Charles Xavier, who sadly is not nearly as nice as her brother. Hilarity ensues, along with too many cameos to count. And in case anybody watching this has not yet seen the movie, I am not going to spoil any of the cameos because you really need to go in fresh. I will say there are a couple that I expected. Since the TVA is involved, I figured someone from Loki would probably show up. But most of them were completely unexpected, and throughout the movie, they just kept coming. There were so many characters that I did not expect to see again, at least not played by the actors that showed up in this movie. And it was a lot of fun seeing some of these people again, possibly for the last time. Sadly, there is no cable in this movie, because by the movie's own admission, they can't afford him. Sadly, no Domino either, which surprised me. I would have thought they could have worked her in somewhere. Also, no TJ Miller, and who cares? If you've seen any of the previous Deadpool movies, you're gonna get a lot of what you would expect. It's silly, it's irreverent, it's got plenty of fourth wall breaking, and more than enough F-bombs and violence to justify that R rating. If you were worried that Disney was going to tone them down, ho 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 no. No, they did not. Pretty much every aspect of this movie is completely over the top, and that's how it should be. If Deadpool was not over the top, it just wouldn't feel right. Despite the insanity, the movie is not without heart. It serves as a loving tribute to the 20th Century Fox version of the Marvel Universe, although it is technically not the first time the Fox Universe and the MCU have crossed paths, but it is the silliest. And the movie paying tribute to the past kind of fits into the narrative of the two leads. Deadpool and Wolverine are both trying to come to terms with their past mistakes and redeem themselves. Wade has kind of fallen into a rut, he's left the superhero life behind, he's split from Vanessa, and the version of Logan that he teams up with after jumping around between various timelines is known as the Worst Wolverine. This guy apparently abandoned the X-Men when they needed him the most, and he now spends most of his days at the bottom of a whiskey bottle. Both of them have some shit they gotta work out, and both actors are up to the task. I really enjoyed how Deadpool and Wolverine play off each other. Deadpool is clearly obsessed with Wolverine. I love how he keeps calling him Peanut. And of course, Logan wants nothing to do with him and is pretty much done with his shit the instant he meets him. They both brought me plenty of laughs, and they are not the only funny characters in this movie, but I hesitate to say much more than that because I really, really, really don't want to spoil anything. I will mention Dogpool because Dogpool was hilarious, and no, the dog does not die. Although, if he's a Deadpool, I'm not sure he can die. Emma Corrin plays Cassandra Nova, Charles Xavier's long-lost twin sister, and she is a very intimidating villain, and pretty much what you would expect as an evil version of Professor X. The way she reads people's minds is super creepy, and she is uber-powerful. Maybe a little too powerful? I mean, after she... How do I say this without spoiling? After she does the very bad thing to that one guy, let's... Just put it that way. If you've seen the movie, you know what I'm talking about. It really makes me wonder why she didn't just do the same thing to Wade and Logan. She can pretty much murder a dude with a snap of her fingers, and even with their regenerative powers, I think our heroes would still be screwed. Other than that, I don't really have many complaints about this one. I mean, there are a couple of jokes that didn't really land, but that's about it. It's pretty much everything I hoped it would be, and more. You can tell Reynolds really enjoys playing this character. I mean, everybody in this movie is clearly having fun, but him especially. This is a passion project for him, and I'm glad he's been able to go nuts with it. If you enjoyed the first two movies, this is a must-see. And for the love of God, do not bring your kids. I saw some comments online about people who took their kids to see the movie and were horrified. I'm like, did you not see the R rating? What's the matter with you? Hire a babysitter, you fools. And yes, there is a post credit scene, and it's very funny. And that's all I have to say about Deadpool and Wolverine. Till next time, take care.